Hello everybody, you are watching Edis English Literature. I am Ordhan Dude. Today we are discussing absurd drama and how it is different from the drama popper. We will also carry out a special discussion on Beckett's In Attendant Godhood, translated as Waiting for Godhood. Most probably you are all familiar with this particular drama. Now, first of all, how comes absurd drama? Some writers in the 1960s in France from the mid 1940s through 1950s on reacted against traditional Western theatrical conventions, rejecting assumptions about the logic, the characterization, the language patterns, as well as how the plot should be presented. As British scholar Martin Aslin used this particular phrase, Theatre of the Absurd, in describing this kind of theoretical performances or uh, the contemporary dramatists that were breaking the rules, including Irish born playwright Samuel Beckett and the French dramatist, the Eugene Unesco, who has set forth the rolling of absurd theatre, the Jane Gennett and Arthur as the most popular. Now there is a popular misunderstanding that these absurd dramatists do not really mean to be an intellectual puzzle to be solved or a kind of an academic commentary is there. They always propounded that simplicity is often compromised and the central passion or remarkably throughout the play there is some decentralized concept but when you are finding out or in search of absurd theater you must find out that there is some novelty of technique and this is not distracting us in reality they are compulsive vision in fact all these absurd dramas are truthfully relating a story of us, the modern man. In the works of absurd dramatists, all semblance of logical constructions of the national linking of idea with the idea of an intellectualism or the argument that is being abandoned and there is a kind of irrationality of expression and all these things that are featured in this board is performed on stage. The absurd playwright simply believes that there is essentially absurdity in our life because neither death nor birth comes to us at our will. The pleasure or the aspects of living peacefully never comes as a logic and conclusion in between life and death. Many of our steps remain imperfect, incomplete, death destructions are relentless and inexplicable not only to people but for their creations. Human being has attempted in fact to make perfections and they have also performed in different ways but why they are doomed, why they are results are not coming out in reality. So each and every situation in different perspectives become absurd. These absurd playwrights are exhibiting a human strife, a passion for living. This state of ours is absurd. So absurd is conceptually pregnant term revealing the attitude of man. Today in the past, into the future, everywhere, in every aspects, we are having a thought. The thought can be logically concluded or illogically inconclusive. That's absurd. Absurd is theater for its use of nonsense language, mockery of theoretical conventions. They study the in-depth subconscious mind by creating works of art 
spontaneously without conscious thought the sometimes bejeered sometimes disjointed or sometimes illogical products they produce and that is the artistic performances of these absurd dramatists The absurd dramatists are noted for their philosophical bent of mind and intellectual nature. They are intellectual, they are ideological, objective and cerebral. The action of an absurd drama uh, is intended to symbolically demonstrate the ideas of the playwright and to ask the very absurdity. A kind of a dramatic temperature they wish to create and that is quite necessary for dramatic purposes only to create a um, interest of the audience so absurdity is for their thought content and absurdity for theoretical performances but whatever farce or absurdity or obscurity is there um, in such a play is a direct reflection of those things that are happening next to us that is actual world the absurd drama is very amusing in fact sensational and surprising surprising is there in every twist and turns for example Becker's Godot that was published in 1953-54. It portrays two, two tramps waiting for a character named Godot. Now, they are, they are not sure who Godot is, whether he will show up to meet them, or we don't know even if he actually exists or not. But they spend each day waiting for him and trying to understand uh, the world in which they live. Back in often reduced character, plot and dialogue to a minimum in an effort to highlight fundamental reality of us. Who is this Godot? The Godot is every man? Is Godot the God? Is Godot the Eldorado? The questions of human existence, the fundamental questions of human existence, in fact, is being questioned or tried to be given an answer through Godot or through the portrait of Godot. In other plays too, there are plenty of characters of this kind of absurdity pops up. In fact, modern being is incapable of true communication. We have no apparent purpose of living our lives. So this is absurdity. Everywhere in this type of place there is a circular structure ending in the same way it began. And very often its central message is buried in symbols. So Godot is also a symbolic one. Samuel Beckett's waiting for Godot or UNESCO's La Cantrais enshrines the essential features of an absurd drama. They play through the absurdist nature and they are considered the masterpieces of absurd drama. But why so? I have mentioned the features of absurdity in their theatrical nature. But most notable words are from Waiting for God, which says nothing happens, nobody comes, nobody goes, it's awful. So the lines from Waiting for Godot makes us our reality, waiting. Samuel Beckett's this landmark work in the realm of modern English theater is itself so striking and attractive. In fact, it is the first great success of the absurdist movement and probably the most known drama. The drama has an ironic overtone compounded with a tragic slant. It virtually 
reflects the pointlessness, the meaninglessness, the boredom, the any the frustration of modern existence. Waiting for Godot is one of the best known plays for reflecting us. In traditional dramas, there are so many of the characters which are from great heroes, from legends. But in Waiting for Godot, every man is the hero. The tram Vladimir and Estragon, just I was telling you, is waiting for Godot, who never arrives. The absurdity of our existence and also the absurdity of living for the purpose of the great hope is Godot. The theme of the play is all about perpetual waiting of the two trams, Didi and Gogo, that is Vladimir and Astragon. The two trams of the play, they are making a kind of a pointless game or killing the times or passing the times, waiting for a savior who never comes. They have become two of the most familiar figures in modern theater. They wait, 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 but never loses their homes. Never loses their hopes. The arrival of the Godot for whom we are waiting for these two acts, in fact, not actualized. Their expectation never finds fruition. In fact, the endless expectation is dashed against the rock of nothingness. Symbolically, Godot is presented as an Eldorado, unknown entity. Perhaps he is some landlord, perhaps he is God, perhaps he is not a God, perhaps he is our highest goal, whom we cannot reach in our lifetime. In fact, the modern man always aspires after a utopia after an Eldorado after a never never world the two trams wait for time indefinitely and for a thing unknown unfamiliar unseen yet ever attractive and alluring as it holds the key to highest happiness symbolically the waiting for Godot may be waiting for us each and every moment as a typical absurd drama waiting for Godot fosters the ironic technique and philosophical outlook typical of the modernism and existentialism. It also states human condition in their own terms, in their own terminology, in their own dramatic accents or inaccents. Now I am quoting a line, Astragon says, let's go. Vladimir replied, we can't. Astragon again asked, why not? Vladimir replied, we are waiting. We are waiting for Godot. Is waiting a punishment? Is waiting a reality? Is waiting a perpetual understanding of our nothingness? Is waiting the very fate of our existence? You better know if we go through this drama, each and every one should get their own perspective of understanding this particular drama. Absurdist plays shocked audience at their first premieres, but their techniques are now a common avant garde theater and is some mainstream works. Contemporary playwrights whose works shows the influence of the theater of absurdism is. Uh, you can mention a few of the American dramatists, Edward Elbe and obviously Sam Shepard. The British dramatists such as Harold Fainter, Tom Stoppard, the, I can say that German dramatist Gunter Grass, Peter Weiss, Swiss dramatist Max Fritsch and Czech dramatist Backlove Havel. These are the contemporary dramatists or even the late modern dramatists who have applied the dramatist 
who, who have applied the absurd theatrical machineries in their presentations. So my this short lecture is been for going into the absurdist drama and obviously you must understand the waiting for God for a good beginning of this type of new theater, this type of avant-garde theater. So like, share, comment and obviously ask me questions regarding absurd drama, regarding theatrical performances, many things I have not told or don't have the time to share with you at this initial lecture. If time permits, I will carry out further lectures on this topic. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.